Berlin, August 1994. Die britischen Truppen der alliierten Schutzmächte haben Berlin verlassen. Während an diesem Tag die letzte Sendung des britischen Soldatensendes BFBS Berlin über den Äther geht, werden noch zwei entmilitarisierte Panzerfahrzeuge zum Ort der Ausstellung, mehr als ein Koffer bleibt, transportiert. Auf dem Gelände am Outpost Kino in der Clearlay gehen die letzten Vorbereitungen für die Ausstellungseröffnung voran. Im ehemaligen Kinosaal wird in einer Museumsvitrine auch das Messingschild vom BFBS-Gebäude zu besichtigen sein. Nur dieses Schild wird im zukünftigen Museum an die vielen Jahre gute Radioarbeit des BFBS Berlin erinnern. And tomorrow, starting dull in the west and north, with drizzle in places, elsewhere dry with sunny spells, and showers developing in the afternoon. Perhaps heavy in places later. Top temperatures 27 degrees here in Berlin, and nearer 23 in the north and west, and the winds light northerly. We'll be meeting our director of broadcasting right after dire straits. Während die letzte britische Einheit, das 62nd Transport and Movement Squadron Royal Logistic Corps, feierlich verabschiedet wird, werden am Tag der letzten Sendung vom BFBS noch einmal ehemalige Moderatorin zu Wort kommen. Eine treue Hörerin aus der ehemaligen DDR, die verbotenerweise jede Sendung gehört hat und nebenbei die englische Sprache perfekt lernte, wird anwesend sein. Während der Sendung wird der weltberühmte Abfertigungscontainer vom Checkpoint Charlie in das zukünftige Museum transportiert. Der Gründer von BFBS Berlin und jetziger Direktor des weltweiten BFBS Senders wird die letzten Worte sprechen, wie er vor Jahren die allerersten Worte bei BFBS Berlin gesprochen hat. Ich bin der BFBS Berlin Representative. And I said, well, anybody can broadcast. He said, come up to the studios and proved it. So we went to this rather unprepossessing place overlooking Spandau Prison. And he said, have a look out of the window. You can see uh, Rudolf Hess. And I said, well, that's pretty exciting, Dick. Now, what do you want me to do? I'm very cocky. I was about 20. He said, come in and do some local announcements. So I did them. And I walked in and I walked out at the other end. And I was a different person, a changed man. I was a gibbering idiot. <laughs> and the voice stayed sane throughout the broadcast. Decided nothing else would do. You moved on from there. I understand that uh, at some point from that studio, that very studio, you had sort of parabolic microphones pointing at various inmates of Spandau Prison. Well, that's right. We decided to track down, uh, we'd heard in the, in, from the newspapers and so forth, that uh, Rudolf Hess, as he pottered around the garden, sometimes talked to himself. He wasn't allowed to talk to people, but he could certainly say a few choice words of what he felt about the general situation. And we found this parabolic microphone, str strung it out of the window, banged it next to an amplifier, did some uh, tricky-dicky wiring and all the rest of it, and for a brief period of time, until the tape got lost, we had the wonderful sounds of Rudolf Hess complaining about his breakfast. There we go. To and himself. Do you still have the tape? No, as I say, the, the tape got destroyed. Um, these tapes do tend to get destroyed. And as I say, the letter came back the next day from John Russell, the senior program director. Under no circumstances will McDonough ever work for this station again. Whoops, oh. and the rest is history, of course. Well, yeah, boo sucks, John. Here I am. What, what will you remember most about BFBS Berlin? Because you have other sort of memories of Berlin, of course, having been born here. <laughs> yes, well, um, I suppose once again, now it can be told, my first baby was conceived in BFBS Berlin. Oh, is that true? Yes. And that's, that's an exclusive. Well, there we go. That's an exclusive for you, ladies and gentlemen, live on the airs on the last broadcast of BFBS Berlin. When I was three years old, I used to listen to BFN, as it then was, and uh, my mother found me one day dancing on a table, singing along to the music. And then, uh, a few years later, when I was eight years old, I recorded some songs for BFBS, some children's songs, and did some sports reports, which were played out on BFN. And um, by 1969, I actually knocked on the door and said, can I do it professionally? And they gave me a test and they said yes, and off I went, interviewing rock bands like uh, Deep Purple, Fleetwood Mac, Spencer Davis, that kind of thing. And since then I've been traveling around the world, but always coming back to Germany and always coming back to Berlin. Was your idea to no, I can't say that, but I was responsible for changing the way in which we did things in Berlin. Previously, it had always been the idea that we did 
uh, serious political reports from Berlin into the network from Cologne. I said, why didn't Berlin have its own format, its own pop station, its own heart, its own message? And we grew it from there with, uh, I suppose, eventually me as program director. Ich habe 1977 P. McD, Peter McDonough, äh, den jetzt hier leider haben wir hier ist, durch Zufall in einer Gedenksendung für Elvis gehört. Und ähm, obwohl es eine Gedenksendung war, war es so persönlich gemacht und so, so ansprechend, dass ich einfach ähm, mir erstmal den Namen wie es gemerkt habe. Und ich habe den Sender dann leider wieder irgendwie verloren auf der Skala und im Frühjahr 1978 wiedergefunden. Und war also sehr erstaunt, ähm, dass wir es von Westberlin kam. Damals war es das erste Mal war es aus Köln. Und dass so ein frischer Sound drin war. BFBS hat immer die Telefonnummern für die Hörer bekannt gegeben. Ich habe dann also angerufen und habe das Glück gehabt, dass das erste Mal auch der Station Manager selbst am Apparat war. Und als, die, als ich sagte, ich kann nur meinen Vornamen sagen, ich rufe aus Ostberlin an, da war der also vollkommen überrascht und, und meinte, das, wie ich dazu komme und, und ich sollte ein bisschen mehr von mir erzählen. Ich habe ihm gesagt, ich kann nicht so viel erzählen, das könnte gefährlich werden. Ich weiß heute noch, in welcher, aus welcher Telefonzelle ich angerufen habe. Das war wirklich wie so ein Schlüsselerlebnis. Und ich kam nach Hause, stellte dann das Radio an und er, er spielte ein Lied für mich und meinte, it's for Heidi, courtesy of the free west. There's one good reason for this. If I don't smile, I, I burst into tears. I start crying because Berlin is my home. It's my hometown. And, you know, it's the town for which I've got the most affection for. But with BFBS, we always go where the military go. And I'm very glad, as you can understand, that the military are no longer in Berlin because they're no longer needed in Berlin, because Berlin's free. So we move somewhere else and do the whole thing somewhere else again. Standortwechsel auch für das ehemalige Kontrollhäuschen am weltberühmten Grenzübergang Checkpoint Charlie. Es kommt ins Museum. Briten, Amerikaner und Franzosen haben darin gemeinsam Wache geschoben. Ihr Job hat sich in der Nacht des Mauerfalls erledigt. What do you remember of that night and what did you do? Well, my first memory about the wall coming down, I was on the loo actually. Were you? Yeah, I was downstairs in, in my house in Milton Bay and I'm on the loo and Jan's upstairs and she says, she shouts down, Baz, you're not going to believe this, the wall's coming down. And I'm saying, look, Jan, this is not very funny, you know. I mean, and this I'm, is hardly the time. This is, you know, we don't need to talk about this now. Uh, but anyway, sure enough, on News at 10, the wall had come down. Um, and I was due to, to have the next day off, because I used to work Sunday to Thursday. Uh, so my day off was, was Friday. Mm. Got a phone call uh, from June, because she'd seen the news as well. Uh, and then we, we had a, a meeting in the morning, early. Oh, everybody came in. And we literally divided the city up into sectors, somewhat similar to the way it's divided now. And we said, right, we need to cover this sector, that sector, the other sector, the lot. Uh, and I managed, very luckily, to get the Army Air Corps to help, John Lay, Major John Lay. Good man. Great man. Uh, and what I said was, is there, is there any chance at all of getting up in a helicopter? And he said, ooh, can you make it now? I said, not really, because we're, we're sort of, if you like, putting the plan together. He said, can you be here at 11 o'clock? I said, yeah, I'll be there at 11. And uh, by that time, we'd all been given our tasks, and everybody was gone, all the machines. We had loads of tape machines ready to go. And we were all literally doing our little things. And uh, I don't know whether Alan will remember this, but he did his piece. He, where were you? Well, at Checkpoint Charlie first, down, down, down a telephone line, which um, was, was really weird, because inside Checkpoint Charlie, it was relative calm, as everything was happening outside. If you were in Berlin or you knew what the Checkpoint looked like, it was a, you know, a porter hut sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, kind of empty in there, except for one or two policemen. There was an American policeman, an RMP guy. And, and I was able to phone in a report just in the nick of time. Mm. And we're doing it live, and you could actually hear in his piece the helicopter that I, that I was in. And it was really, it was just a tremendous occasion. Yep. Um, it was BFBS Berlin were there to, to cover the... We covered the, the lot. The wall coming up, of course, with Clive Freeman, and yeah. of course the wall coming down with you guys. British Forces Radio! <laughs> <lacht> Als die ähm, Heidi irgendwann mal die Erlaubnis hatte, nicht zu deinem so dein Geburtstag ja. zu fahren, und dann hat sie gesagt, also die macht halt den Bahnhof zu, ob ich sie denn treffen okay. könnte. Ähm, naja, ich meine, dass unser, unsere Telefonate mitgehört wurden, das ist ja nun mal klar ne, beim Militär. Und mir wurde nahegelegt, ich soll das nicht tun. 
but sadly for the rest of the staff here at BFBS Berlin who are employed uh, locally, then they will go and do other things. One of uh, our guys is a reporter for a TV, uh, for a, uh, a newspaper. One has just started up his own band again. Um, he's been uh, in a, a successful band in the past, and so he will then go and do that. Um, and others will go hunting for jobs, I, I fear. Um, I think I have a very talented team here. I have no worries that uh, they, they'll all be fine. I'm sure they will, and I wish them every success because uh, they've been tremendous. They really have. Say that you know, from the heart because they have been great. Excuse me. We made our love on Thanks for bringing the booze over. That was very generous of them. <laughs> that was a good. Yeah, mate. Sorry? Give them to the MD. Sort it out. Hello, BFBS. Yeah. Hello, John. Yeah, of course I can. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay, mate. John Bennett, say hello. Hello! hello. 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 <laughs> <laughs> He's listening to what's going to the Balkans, so he wants to hear it over the phone. <laughs> I would think it was only fitting that that should be the last record on the British Forces Broadcasting Service here in Berlin. So our studios now close and the engineers are poised outside to actually take the studios apart. Uh, a huge thanks from me to, to Jackie, to Ingrid, to Brian, to Patrick, to Dennis, to Robin, Steve, Andy, and to June Wilde, who's been a star. And that's it from me on Berlin. I'll see you from London in a couple of months' time. And it's only fitting now that uh, the final words on BFBS Berlin should come from the Director of Broadcasting, who in fact uh, was born in Berlin, Peter McDonough. Thank you very much, Aidan. Well, I think all the parts are here to say farewell with. Uh, we, we are, after all, saying goodbye, but uh, not too many Kleenex because it's been very good for Berlin. It's been very good for all of us. I wonder if I want to lapse into a bit of Jinglish. Wo ist die Champagne bottle bitter? Haben wir eine Korkkraken? Danke sehr vielmals. Now, I want to do a little bit of instruction just before we finally pull out that. Baz, stop taking the things off the wall. And would the MD kindly put that clock down? Ah, we're not auctioning off everything. CBFB is useful for something even unto the last. Well, it's been a great however many years it was, and we still quite don't know officially. We think it opened in 1961, though, and it's been rattling the airwaves, of course, before that. Not from Berlin, but from Germany to Berlin. And that's the way it's going to be till virtually the end of the year. So, a little bit of instruction from all of us gathered here. We're not saying our Vida's in, because that means we might come back, which wouldn't be right. <laughs> we're saying tschüss. So, in three seconds' time... Everybody cheers. from us, cheers! cheers. Thanks, Lee. Cheers, mate. Bye. Die Studiotechnik wird an einem anderen Sendeort von BFBS Verwendung finden. Einige Mitarbeiter werden arbeitslos. Andere werden irgendwo in den Redaktionen von BFBS weltweit ihre Arbeit weiterführen. In der Ausstellung Mehr als ein Koffer bleibt, wird nur ein Messingschild an BFBS Berlin erinnern.